Okay, episode 76. Welcome, Blind Dark Souls 3 Let's Play. She said, Dear, oh dear brother, I'm on my way. My brother. Unyielding Sword of Lothric's Prince. Unyielding Sword of Lothric's Prince. So that wasn't the prince? This one's the prince? Oh no, he is the prince. Is our curse. Are these two brothers? Is this brother and sister? Which one's the prince? Merging. Yeah, welcome to episode 76, Blind Dark Souls 3 Let's Play. Really enjoying this boss. All solo offline. No soul grinding, but just souls that I get naturally throughout the run. I think I'm at level 83. Spear and shield build. A lot of jank I don't like in this game, but this boss I'm liking quite a bit. Oh boy. Oh, we got two. Oh, Younger Prince and Elder Prince. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, that shit that I didn't like from fucking Aldrich. Okay, we got two health bars. <laughs> That's kind of neat. I, I think this is going to be a decent boss. It's kind of the same as before, just with some added bullshit. The sword looks probably stronger. Slightly longer combos. Okay. Oh, I don't know how I got away with that. Yeah, the timing is great. It lets you fucking react roll and then double roll. And, you know, you get punished by losing stamina. Like, this battle isn't making it actually worthwhile having a fucking shield. I love the battles where my shield actually does something. Okay, yeah, the, the teleport dive attack is rough. So, upon every teleport, I just have to instinctively dodge. But they made it so that on the attacks where... where it's a delay attack, you're able... you have enough time to get in the next dodge to actually dodge it. So that's great. Um, okay, so I have to get through that first phase every time to the second phase. And then I noticed during the second phase, I'm only damaging the older, or presumably the older, the bigger um, brother. So once I defeat the bigger brother, is the younger one gonna be kinda crawling around on the ground? I have to defeat it too, or when I defeat one, like the big one, do they both die? Hey. Yeah, so this is going to be difficult. I, I knew it was too easy. I knew it was too easy. This is a late game boss. A lot of bosses have given me a lot of trouble in this game. I knew it wasn't just going to be like... That fucking easy to defeat the High Prince of Lost Thrick, my last fucking Lord of Cinder that I need to beat. Assuming I don't have to fight that Ludleth of Courland guy. And... Lo and behold, I was correct. Second phase, seems like it's definitely going to be hard, but seems doable. But I bet it still will take me quite a fucking while. I mean, I, hopefully I get to the point where I can consistently get through this first phase. Oh, I'm leaving myself way too low on stamina. That was a mistake. Don't want to use too many, uh... Oh, I could have gone for an R2 attack there. Oh! That was a poorly timed roll. That was maybe not the wisest, but I got away with it. Okay, so when... When the circle appears back in the same spot or right above me, that's when I know to dodge roll. So it's that circle that's giving me a little bit of a hint. The magical teleportation circle. Let's go for an R2. That was a mistake. It's okay. See, I love that you can actually read that attack. That was a massive mistake. 
Yeah, that. It, it's like when he. It looks like when he's going to like into like the sword stance. Oh, rolling through did not work. No biggie. Only took stamina damage. Went for an R2. Was that a mistake? No, got away with it. Oh boy. Buffered an R2 that almost got me killed, but I managed to position my way out of it through probably a, a lot of luck. Ooh. Oh, I needed to fucking roll. I keep getting confused because sometimes it appears close. And he's not doing the dive down. But then sometimes it appears close and he is doing the dive down. It's a little bit janky, but it's uh, it's not that bad. Oh, yeah, and I wanted to go fucking put my fucking burgers on. But I just happened to have to end episode 75 right in the fucking middle of the cutscene, so I haven't had the chance to do that yet. So definitely at the end of this episode, I'm recording on PS4, by the way, if you're not aware, uh, where I can only record an hour at a time, which I'm grateful for. I mean, I love the Nintendo Switch, but fuck, you can only record 30 second clips on that thing. And not with voice either, so. Very happy to make use of this feature. Um, so yeah, at the end of this episode, if I go into an episode 77, which I probably will, uh, I will definitely be going and putting some damn veggie burgers in the damn frying pan, getting them damn started so I can have some damn fine veggie burgers while I watch some Wolfie VGC tonight, assuming there's not some even better or more interesting video for me to watch. Kind of concerned about the fucking, like, Iran attacking fucking Israel and just all the fucking, you know, drama that seems like it's escalating towards World War III, which is obviously not, you know, good for anybody. Except, I guess, maybe warmongers. Not that I'm for fucking, uh, you know, I... <laughs> I support Israel going after their fucking hostages, that's for fucking sure. Uh, I don't love Hamas, but I'm also not a complete idiot. I know that fucking Israel way back in the past created Hamas, and it certainly looks like they fucking stood down on that fucking... that Oxo October 7th attack. Not that Hamas was justified in doing it, it's fucking disgusting. Fucking radical Islam, political Islam is fucking disgusting in its justification of violence and rape in order to fucking spread Islam and create the global caliphate. Like, yeah, fuck off with that shit, but... Where are you? Oh! Awesome. So, yeah. I, I don't support just, like, wanton killing of Palestinian citizens, particularly children. Uh, at the s Oh, I rolled into that. I, I thought I rolled on enough of an angle to miss that. No biggie. Um... At the same time, I understand, like, you know, when you're going after fucking Hamas that, like, hides under hospitals and does all kinds of crazy bullshit, like, you know, there's gonna be some collateral damage. It it sucks to refer to people as collateral damage if I died or somebody I loved or a bunch of people I loved died and it was just called collateral damage. I uh, wouldn't love it, but, I mean, you, just, you have to look at the big picture. So... Yeah, all the fucking pro-Palestine and pro-fucking Hamas protests that call for, like, death to Jews all over the fucking supposedly liberal and loving Western world with all these fucking leftist morons that are going to be the first to get annihilated by Hamas or communism or all the other fucking um, movements they support. I mean, some of you that may wind up listening to this are certainly going to be on that side, and I would say, like, what the fuck are you supporting? But some people I talk to that are in leftist stances, like, I say that to them and they're like, yeah, I know what you mean, but I just, you know, I support these things for this, this, and this. But you're right, I don't support calling for death to Jews, or I don't support, you know, saying, like, uh, eat the rich. Some people say eat the rich and they just mean, like, 
you know, we want our money back, tax the rich. Some people say eat the rich, and they literally just want a fucking bloodbath. Like, uh, uh, like, what was that movement, uh, the, the political Great Leap Forward, where Mao's Red Guard, all those fucking high school and, uh, college students went and murdered all the fucking intellectuals in China in the 60s or the 70s or whatever that Xi Jinping was a part of. Got pulled into it as a kid, killed his fucking... Uh, own father and uh, sister with the crowd to save himself. I mean, I... Oh, boy. You know, at the end of the day, as spirits, as souls, I don't judge anybody. I do have a very... Oh, God. I fucked that up. Um, I, I have a very deep and broad-minded loving perspective towards life. I do believe that all of evil is something that was originally born out of accident within this uh, extremely powerful cosmic machine we live in called the universe. Um, and I believe that life in its innate nature is not of evil and that evil was created accidentally. It's been propagating accidentally through an initial accident that uh, you know, has been multiplied through the multiplicative nature of this incredibly, incredibly powerful and beautiful reality we live in. It's like... If you program evil into DNA, and DNA replicates itself so quickly, it, it's gonna fucking multiply. Anyway, that, that would be a very long speech to give my position on that. I actually started writing a book to try and explain that earlier this year. I only got about 10,000 words in before that petered out, but hopefully I will pick it up again at some point. Need to get it to about 30 to 60,000 words before I can publish it. But, um... But yeah, even, like, super evil people like George Soros, Klaus Schwab, Xi Jinping, Bill Gates, and, I, I mean, I mean, shit. If you're not naive, you know these guys have handlers even higher and more evil than them. And even them, I don't fucking... Oh, God! I, I don't judge them like, oh, they're innately evil and all they deserve is fucking eternal torture and pain or something, or they just deserve to be annihilated. At a certain point, I think a lot of annihilation has to come into place because, like, at a certain point, you gotta stop the bleeding. I don't know how life hasn't even stopped the bleeding yet on the massive torture that is life on Earth throughout seemingly all of recorded history, but I digress. So... Anyway, just getting back to the point of I'm interested in what's going on between Iran and Israel and literally everybody else. Because it seems like everybody's getting drawn in. Um, you know, I want peace. I want prosperity. But we'll see how it goes because I also believe that uh, there's a massive fucking evil fourth dimensional entity trying to eat our planet and literally... It doesn't just want to enslave humanity, it's got humanity enslaved, it's got us mind-controlled. But it doesn't just want to kill us all, it wants to use us and consume us the way, like, a, a pedophile wants to use and consume a child. The way a, a serial killer or a serial rapist wants to use and consume their victim. Like, uh, you know, to use one of the names that typically throughout history people have used to refer to this entity. Satan wants... The, the final solution, the final entrapment is Satan wants to convince us to absolutely love and adore it and worship and give ourselves to it willingly, beg it to have its way with us. And then it wants every piece of us, body, mind, soul. But to get all that, we have to give ourselves willingly. We have to give our love to it. That's our deepest, most beautiful part. If it gets that, it gets everything, and, and that's absolutely what it wants. It's hungry for that, it's it's addicted to eating our energy to get the love that it's not experiencing from its own, like, internal experience in reality, because if whatever happened to it that caused it to become so fucked up to begin with. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll stop on that. But, yeah, I'm curious about what's going to happen in the world. Hopefully, uh... Some kind of Deus Ex Machina comes at some point sooner rather than later, and, uh... The people who want to live as, like, innocent, 
beings that just want to have a decent life get to do so. I mean, that would be very cool. Oh, wow. I didn't get out of the fucking way of that. When it goes into that stance, when he goes into that stance where he just holds the sword like that, I just really need to recognize that as being specifically that one. And then, like, be ready to roll up and to the right, right as he swings. That's what I need. <sighs> oh, yeah, I definitely need to get those burgers in the damn pan. Damn it, Janet. I mean, I could just end one of these episodes early, but I like, you know, making them full-length episodes, pushing them towards the 60-minute mark. Especially since my goal is to finish this by episode 100. I don't want to just have a bunch of, like, five-minute episodes. Go. Yeah, I have not gotten this guy to the second phase yet again. Then again, I don't fight very well when I'm trying to explain shit as I fight. Let's go. How did I miss? It's the drop down attack that's really been getting me a lot, honestly. I love his yells. They just sound so cool. Like, I love the pure, like, rage you can hear in his voice. Like, just... The voice actor really sells it. I, I believe it. These From Software games absolutely have some of the fucking best voice acting around. Which I'm assuming means they have really good uh, voice direction. Okay, awesome. Oh! I mean, you did not correctly fucking understand where I was positioned, and I am grateful for that. Sometimes I miss, though, and I also don't understand how the fuck that happens. Heal, damn it. Oh, dude! I so fucking pressed the button pretty damn close to the right timing, but... I feel like that was one of those scenarios where the roll animation just barely started, but then I still got fucking hit. I had my shield up, so I tanked the first part of it, but then the rolling flames multi-hit fucking took my whole fucking health bar. That is annoying. At least I recognized it that time, though. Oh, I should savor this, because this is... So this is the part of the game... I said this in an earlier episode. These From Software games seem to always, like, clearly point you to one thing being your big ultimate goal. And then it always seems to be once you get to that goal, it's usually like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there's still another, like, third of this game left to play. You have to actually do this. You're not quite done yet. So, basically, this is that point in this game. Like, I'm going to get this guy. And it's going to be like, oh, okay, well, I've got all the cinder left. And then there's going to be some plot twist. Where it's like, well, actually, you have to do this. Ludleth of Cortland is actually Satan. And you must, you know, go and beat him and his cronies here in Hellworld. Or whatever it is. Something cool. Alright, let's go. Pokey. Rolly. Broly. Oh, let's go for an R2. I. Oh, yeah. It was a bit greedy. I mean, if I would have timed my rolls a li little bit better, I could have gotten away with that R2. Uh, I mean, obviously, the tendency is when you're going to have to fight a boss a shitload of times, like, you want to really figure out as many ways to get in as much damage as possible. I don't want to have to fucking... Uh, you know, just, like, chip his health away little by little. I want to, like, get 
a lot of different attacks in so that I can eventually like get really solid at breaking down the first phase really quickly. Don't even give myself that many chances to get killed in the first phase by drawing it out, but just get it done quick, get to the second phase, and then just grind out that second phase. Right, Mr. Hat? Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember how Mr. Hat talks. <laughs> hmm. Yes, rather. Oh, I have a very random sense of humor, if you couldn't tell already. You motherfucker. Get to the chopper. Let's go. Oh! Okay, all good. Pokey pokey. Yeah, that lunge thrust is tough. Okay. This one's not that bad. It'd be better if I could, like, be approaching him as he's charging it up. That way I could actually punish it with an attack. That'd be cool. Okay, all good. Pokey. Get away and heal. Okay. Oh, again, I recognized it. I tried to roll to the right. And the fucking thrust just comes out fucking fast as shit, man. It's like, for me, maybe it's just because I'm 37 years old and old, but it's it's basically unreactable. I keep trying to react, and I get caught in it. So I'm going to have to memorize the timing, which just takes longer and is less intuitive. And less fun, quite frankly. It's more anxiety inducing because you're sitting there looking at somebody giving you no indication and you're just like Your mind's just like is it now 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 is it now? Oh, it's now I'm dead Huh, but all things considered this boss is so much better than some of the other bosses like that fucking dancer God, I really want that purple cape. Looks so fucking sick. Maybe you can't even get it. Who knows? But I might try and grind it out. Might do a few runs of those guys at some point. Try and grind out that purple cape. Look very cool and purple, y'all. Yeah. Pokey, pokey. Yeah, so the lock-on system of this game just can't, seems to not be able to handle... Oh shit. That doesn't seem to be able to handle an enemy going directly behind you. So if he happens to warp directly behind you, like that, then you don't keep the lock-on. Like, did they not fucking see that in the fucking testing that that fucking... I, here, here, here's my guess. Here's my intuitive guess. That it, because of, uh, uh, what do they call that in, in programming with 3D engines, like occlusion, like masking and occlusion, basically like right now it's only calculating it in general with 3D engines. It's only calculating the data for the stuff I'm looking at, which is sometimes why if you're able to, like if I was able to swing my camera around quicker it might give me some lag because it has to calculate everything that wasn't being calculated. Like think of it like, it's like in quantum mechanics. If you're not looking at it, it doesn't exist. It's not quite like that in quantum mechanics, but it's similar. If you're not looking at it, it's not being fully calculated. 
So I bet that's why when the enemy swings behind you too fast, it just has it programmed to just let go. Because otherwise it would create a lag spike on probably the lesser versions. Like, well, originally this was only a PS4 game. When this game came out, the PS5 wasn't even around. So maybe high-end computers could handle it better, assuming they had it programmed in such a way to take advantage of the extra capacity of the high, um, uh, uh, you know, high, com high, 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 <laughs> high-powered computers. But yeah, I, I bet that's it. Well, at least that's my, I could say, a strong, educated guess. Where are you? R2, fuck yeah. I mean, if this guy didn't have the warp, he would almost be too easy. So, I can see why they gave him a warp. Or being that he has a warp, I can see why they made him easy, you know? Was it the chicken or the egg? Who knows? Doesn't matter. Ooh, almost got me. R2. Fucking right. Poke. Wow, warp away and do nothing, eh? Maybe it's better to not even try and approach on that fucking flame attack. But sometimes he starts it up when I'm fairly close and I'm gonna have to dodge to the right. Tried to roll, didn't get it, but I got the shield up. Bang. R2? Oh, that was very dangerous. And he just happened to miss me. Awesome. Okay. Didn't get it. No biggie. Poke. Got my stamina recover. Bang. Oh, boy. Okay, I saw it, didn't get to it, not the end of the world. Oh, wow! I, I don't really understand what happened there. I don't really understand what happened there, that sucks. Uh, obvi like, obviously, when push comes to shove, I ran out of stamina. It's like, and that's what enabled my fucking health to get chopped away there. Uh, he was almost in the second phase. Yeah, this is going well. I'm getting better at it. Even as I'm talking through it, I'm doing decent. I mean, I notice when I talk, I, like, miss my punishes and stuff. Like, I mean, I'm like a computer, too, in the sense that the more... I only have a certain amount of resources in any given moment. You could call that focus. You could call that energy. And if more is being spent in one manner, in one direction... Then less is being spent, you know, on on being able to concentrate on the fight. That's just how it goes. Ba boom. Ba boom. Yeah, we gon' get this guy, yeah. Oh, didn't get my shield up in time. Luckily, he took less than half health from the hit, so that's not bad. Yeah, it seems like, um... Oh my god! Tried to fucking roll that, because I recognized I was low on stamina. Fuck! I was gonna say, generally, like, when he does his little two-hit combos, generally just dodging the first one and then tanking the second one is working well for me. I'm kind of afraid that if I roll both, that he'll do a third one, or I'll just get out of the habit of holding my shield up. I don't know. It, it, yeah, there's a lot of complications, too. Determining how to go about this. A lot of moving parts.
It's nice that uh, the days are getting longer. We're also past daylight savings time, so that helps it be later at night, or you know, later by the clock when uh, when the sun goes down. Even though that's just an illusion of uh, time management, basically. Still nice that the days are getting longer, all in all. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Thought about going for an R2 there. Guess I would have gotten away with it. Yeah, a lot of the time on that second hit of the, the combo, I can like position myself where I am where the first part of the swing is, and then I end up under it, so I don't even have to tank it with the shield, even though I obviously hold my shield up for safety. Oh, I didn't get the roll because uh, I was just finishing my healing animation, but at least I. Uh... Oh boy. Early roll, still got it though. Oh boy. Oh, rolled too early. Okay. Oh, three hit combo. Using a lot of Estus. Didn't get my roll out there. Was, what the fuck? I was trying to run forward. I guess I didn't have the stamina to run forward. Fuck, I hate the thing where you hold the run button and then your run doesn't come out for like several fucking seconds. That is annoying as shit, man. Don't love that feature of these games. Even if they bake that in on purpose to punish running out of stamina, I like... I don't like it. Even, like, even when I'm, like, okay, full stamina. Walking. Press. Look how long it takes for the run to start. That's fucking stupid. I know that's partially because roll is on the same button as dodge, but, I mean, that's fucking dumb. For a game that's all about precision, for a game that is so punishing... That's dumb. Not a fan. Not a fan. Oh, dodge too early on that one. Too early on that one, but got away with it. Still got the R2. Awesome. Rolled a little too late on that one. Not, a, not the end of the world. Oh, boy. Heal, heal, heal. Where are you? Okay. Bang. Bang. Oh, boy. Low on stamina. Oh, if I don't watch my stamina... I get fucked over for it. And it's hard to watch your stamina while you're paying attention to everything else. Oh, I just didn't recognize what he was about to do there. Got smoked. Okay. Positioned myself out of that one even though I didn't time the roll right. Shielded that. Poke. When I get into the flow with this guy, it goes really well. R2. Poke. Okay, stamina recovery. Boom. St okay, poke. Stamina recovery. Boom. Poke. Oh! Didn't have enough stamina. I fucking 
shield tank the first one, even though I pressed roll, didn't fucking get it out in time. And then because the shield tank of the attack, the first one, took out my fucking stamina bar and some of my health, then I was like in super stagger stun, and he was just able to fucking take out the rest of my fucking health, and there was not a fucking thing I could do about it. Fuck, man. The fucking stamina management is so annoying. But, like, even if... I don't know, that that's why I prioritized fucking vitality so much, was to get all the fucking armor on, so that hopefully I would have more damage reduction. But I think the damage reduction of armor does not fucking help you very much in this game. Like, what else could I wear? As far as rings. I'm trying to remember all the different rings I have. Like, what else could I wear besides the fucking... One that increases my dexterity. Not getting critical attacks. That one I didn't find any fucking help with. And I'm not doing successive attacks anyway. Yeah, that I'm wearing. So I'm getting the help from that. Although I'm taking a lot of chip damage, so let's say that's not helping me that much, because usually it's kind of like a focus sash, focus sash in Pokemon. You equip it to a Pokemon, and then if they uh, if they take an attack at full health that would one-shot them, then they're left with one HP. But you can just hit them with chip damage off of your like lesser like your support Pokemon, break the focus sash, and then they're not at full HP. So now they don't have the protection anymore, and you can just like do the rest of their health in the one shot so this probably isn't helping me that much because i'm taking so much chip damage with my shield so what else could i do i don't want to leave my hp low so no uh that I, I don't trust myself to survive on like low hp god this one doesn't weigh much eh 0.9 some way more yeah i can always change out my gloves okay those don't help. Lowering equip load increases attack. Well, I'm not doing that. Uh, Zorb HP, no. No, 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 no. No, no. I mean, I could just increase my strength as well. That I don't need, that no. No, yeah, so, so strength as well. No, not, not instead of this. Strength instead of this. Okay, and I'm still below the equip load. Fucking right. Well, at least I'm doing even more damage now. So that will help me get through it faster. It will reduce the cost of each mistake made. Because there will just be less time for mistakes to be made because I'll get through the boss just a little bit faster by doing just a little bit more damage. 166. Well, I think I was maybe doing 161 before. Seems small, but I'm sure it will at least maybe kill him one hit faster. Which is, you know, I mean, that's the difference between victory and defeat, that's for sure. God, that's the worst attack. And the dive attack. Those were by far the two worst attacks in the first phase. Sometimes, I don't know if it's better to fucking... Roll through a hit or, or just tank it on my shield, stamina-wise. It's gotta be roll. But the best is positioning myself out of the way where it just doesn't even hit me. Oh, that's dangerous. Lunge? Nope. Okay, gotcha. Just let my stamina recover. Don't have to hit him on every single gap. Oh, nothing, eh? Got it! Oh, look at the lag spike! Oh, boy. Positioning helped. Okay, stamina recovery. 
Oh, positioning again. Uh, early, but still worked. All right. Heal, 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 heal. Oh, danger! Massive leg spike. Awesome. Bang. Oh, I actually stunned him. Go for a couple extra attacks. Good thing I recognized it. What's happening? Holy shit, man. Oh, all good. Thrust at me? No. Yeah, him up against the wall is super danger. Oh, third hit. Fuck it, heal. Oh, damn. My fucking healing did nothing because I got hit again. All good. Gotcha. Tried to roll. Tried to roll again. Third time's a try. Didn't get it. There we go. Okay. 39 minutes into this video, I get... So basically it took me 40 minutes between my first uh, time getting to the second phase and my second time getting to the second phase. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Where is he? Uh-oh. Lunge? Oh! Oh shit, that's a big damage one. Okay. R2. Fuck it. Oh, not close enough! Brutal. Oh, I don't want to fight him up against the wall. Damn. Oh! Teleport mid-combo. Well done, sir. Damn it. Okay, I hit both of them with that poke. Oh! If I can get behind... Damn! Was trying to fucking roll. Yeah, if I can get, get behind... Looks like I do more damage to the younger one than I do the older one. Lorien, Elder Prince, and Lothric, Younger Prince. So yeah, it looks like I do more damage to the, the, the younger one. But I gotta actually hit from behind to fucking hit that one. But, potentially... Maybe if I get a lot of hits in on it, I can destroy that one first and then the second phase will probably be very similar to the first phase except it looks like the blade is probably stronger it has like more fieriness to it hey what happened to all the remember how i thought as i like placed more of the lord cinders i was getting more like cinderish on my clothing maybe my clothing only looks cindery when i'm at the firelink shrine and I just never realized that. Yeah, level 83. Feels good that I got to the second phase again. It's only up from here. So yeah, what, what episode am I on again? Uh, this is 76, right? I believe this is 76. Getting close to the end of it. Who knows, I could beat him before the end of episode 76. Need more stamina. Oh, that was a quick one. I was waiting and then it came out too quick for me to react. Oh boy. Oh, I was getting good at that one. Hey, luckily the big uh, flame floor thing didn't hit me though. The floor is lava didn't hit me. Yeah, right now, he's got a fla bit of a flamey cinder sword, but it gets, like, way more flamier and cindery after. Oh, boy. Oh, good. Positioning helped me. It's the walk back. Damn it! Fuck it. That was, like, a mid-attack warp. It's a bit fucking much. I wonder if I can roll forward through that. Seems a little risky. I'm just not too sure. Should really heal. Yes. R2? 
Yes. Oh, no. No, no. Oh, I got the shield, though. Actually, that was not bad. R2 again. I just felt it, and it worked again. Guess I should trust my instincts. Trust your instincts. Good. Damn. <laughs> Never give up. Shout out to whoever gets those references. Pretty popularly quotable game. Fuck off. Makes it very... Like, when he does mid-attack or mid-combo warps, it does make it quite fucking confusing to know, like, when you're gonna need to fucking dodge or what's going on. Especially when... Like, half the time, he's warping to somewhere that is losing your fucking targeting, so you don't even know where he is. Can't see him. God damn. Oh, well. Still, by far, by far, one of the better bosses in this game. And thematically, it's cool, too. It's like, this guy's obviously super powerful, but... Um... Like, super broken, too. He's, like, fighting you on his knees. Pretty intense. I don't know if I got every note right on there. It's for somebody with a strong jazz voice to get perfect, but pretty cool song. From a little known game called Super Mario Brothers. Oh, well done, Eric. Oh, I really. Oh, oh, I, th I saw it coming and I didn't fucking dodge it correct. Oh, I saw it coming. Didn't dodge in time. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. Just take a heal. Just take a heal. Lunge at me. Thrust at me. Okay. I thrust at you. I thrust in your general direction. From the heart of... I can't remember the quote. From the heart of something, I stab at you. Or something like that. Slay him. He's angry. Life's not going his way. I understand, bro. Got to heal again. Don't get in my R2 attack. Whatever. Okay, alright. Well, whatever. Whatever, bro! Oh, I got that one. <laughs> Ooh, I could have done an R2. Okay, so the downward plunge... The Zelda 2 down stab. Oh boy. You can definitely get an R2 after that. If not, maybe a charge R2. Oh, I'm getting better at that. Yes! Down stab. Nope. This is slam. All good. Oh, I missed him. He missed me and I missed him. I miss you, you miss me. Anybody know that song? A B E B E B I Vicky Bye B O O Vicky Bye Bo B U Boo Vicky Bye Bo Boo. Oh! Oh! I got smashed! I was not far enough away to get. Not far enough away to, to escape that slam attack. God damn. 47 minutes. Uh, okay, I might end this episode. Episode 76, I do believe. Um, after this next run. Because I don't want to get a run that's like taking a long time and going really long. And then I have to like change episodes in the middle of fighting. That is a recipe for disaster. Also, I have to go to the bathroom again. Also, I really want to get my supper started. But I will definitely be back for at least one episode while Sapa is cooking.
And then as supper's cooking, maybe like halfway through the episode, maybe at the 30 minute mark, I'll, I'll try and pick the right temperature on the frying pan so that I can just cook the first half of them without having to look at them. And then I'll go like flip them on this elevator ride. I'll just like carry the, or maybe I'll just drop the PS3 controller and the headset so that it doesn't accidentally disconnect from the PS4 from running across the apartment to go to my kitchen. Then I'll go flip them on the elevator ride. And I'll just like, I don't know, yell so that you guys know I'm still here or something. <laughs> we'll see how well you can hear me from like running across my apartment flipping burgers. Veggie burgers, if you will. But unfortunately made of soy, I, I do try and avoid the soy. Because I don't want to be just jack full of fucking synthetic fucking, uh, you know, estrogen. Or is it bisphenol A that they put in all the plastic? That is synthetic estrogen. It, either way, I know soy like definitely increases your like feminine hormones in your body. It's not something I'm looking to do, but you know sometimes you can't avoid it. I don't think it's the end of the world if you just eat some. Like, dude, a as if all the fucking super alpha bros don't eat fucking soy sauce sometimes. I mean, maybe they don't. Probably some of the guys that are super into health might not. But you know, I'm doing my best. But yeah, I do definitely try to avoid soy-based stuff a lot of the time. Wow, I got away with that. I think because I was close to him, I was able to kind of roll around him, and I was able to position away from that. That sword attack! Oh, if I would have dodged! Oh, fuck, I had a moment there, like, like a left the stove on moment. Like, did I leave the stove on? Boom! Slams right down through my fucking head. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Death. Okay. Um, let me at least go run backwards toward... I'll get up on the elevator. So I'll end the episode on the elevator. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I believe this is episode 76. Um... I uh, appreciate you coming back at some point in time and space to watch this. Listen to me. Commentate my blind Dark Souls 3. Let's play Dark Souls 3. Um, I'm enjoying it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about me, about the game, about whatever. Iran and Israel and the conflict in the world. The human condition. The nature of life. And uh, I will be back real soon for episode 77, and hopefully we get this boss in episode 77. It's going decently well. It's a tough boss, but I feel that this boss is very much tough but fair. And uh, yeah, I'll be back soon. Thanks.